Fifteen years ago, Turkish Armenian journalist Herang Dink was assassinated in broad daylight outside the offices of the Argos newspaper in Istanbul. Dink had fought tirelessly for human rights and democracy in Turkey, a change in Turkey's official policy on Armenia and Armenians, and dialogue between Turks and Armenians. Fifteen years on, the Herang Dink Foundation, founded by his family and friends immediately after the assassination, has brought an exhibition to Yerevan. The exhibition is called Herang Dink, Here and Now, and invites guests to better understand his struggle, message and legacy. So for those of you wondering where the exhibition actually is, it's literally a stone's throw Yerevan style. The Vernissage Market is about 100 meters that way, and the Republic Square is less than a mile away. The exhibition is open till July 31st, at the Armenian Center for Contemporary Experimental Art. Let's go check it out. This exhibition is based on the 23 and a half Hrant Dink Memorial in Istanbul. This year is the 15th anniversary of Dink's assassination, so it made sense to us to hold the first exhibition outside Turkey, in Yerevan. Two years ago, the Hrant Dink Foundation established a special site of memory to remember his work and share his message. You can actually visit the 23 and a half memorial site online. With this cutting edge website, the fleet of rooms include Dink's own desk and the exhibits are clearly visible. But why the number 23 and a half? The Istanbul Memorial takes its name from Hrant Dink's article 23 and a half April, which was published in Argos on April 23, 1996. It represents a paradigm shift and the start of a domino effect that would lead to Dink's death, but also a spark for an internal conversation in Turkey. Dink's article is about how April 23rd is Children's Day in Turkey and April 24th is Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. He writes, How can April 23rd be experienced with more fervor? How can April 24th be erased from memories? If April 23rd is going to be for all children, I say, let it be for the children of Armenia too. A screen system has also been installed so that attendees in the Istanbul Memorial site can see the attendees in Yerevan and speak to each other over an audio system. Another heartwarming addition is that visitors will be guided through the exhibition by Hrant Dink himself in Armenian and Turkish. You'd be mistaken in thinking that the exhibition is just about Dink's assassination. As you go around the exhibition, you will see the different stages of Dink's life. Behind me is the section about Camp Armen, a camp set up for orphaned Armenian children from Turkey's rural villages, which Dink was a part of. The Turkish state later seized the camp, and in 2015, the owners were having it demolished. This led to a widespread civic campaign in Turkey, which was joined by both Armenians and Turks. In some good news, the Armenian Missionary Association of America recently announced that a new Camp Armen will be built in Turkey. In a statement, they called the original camp a blessing to a multitude of Armenian youngsters, including Hrant Dink and his wife, Raquel. The exhibition walks visitors through Dink's life, the articles he penned, and explains why the Argos newspaper was a trailblazer in Turkey, at a time when it was extremely dangerous to grapple with these taboo topics. All these black pieces of paper on the wall denote a time where Dink experienced some sort of persecution, be it being called in by intelligence officers, being taken to court by the Turkish state, or even having death threats or protest movements outside his office by Turkish ultranationalist groups. This would all, of course, eventually lead to Dink's assassination. The exhibition then turns focus to the assassination, after which the assassin himself was handed a Turkish flag by police forces to parade in front of the press's cameras. We also see the outrage it provoked in many sectors of Turkish society. The visuals offer a view into where things stand today with Dink's legacy and those still committed to promoting it. Our goal was to take this exhibition to other parts of the world, to bring my father's words to you. I realize that he is very respected every time I come to Armenia. I feel like I am part of a family when I am here. I am glad that he has become more accessible through this exhibition. Apart from the exhibition, a number of auxiliary events will take place throughout the summer, which will be announced soon on the Foundation's website and social media accounts. We want to take this exhibition to Europe and America and other countries too, especially to cities with a large number of Armenians. 
Many of those who pursue justice for Hrant Dink and for Armenians in general are also active members of Turkish civil society, which has been under pressure since the 2013 Gezi Park protests and the 2016 coup attempt. Many of Turkey's journalists, too, have been silenced. Staff at the Hrant Dink Foundation have faced death threats, their conferences have been banned by Turkish courts, and 15 years on, the masterminds behind Dink's assassination are yet to face justice. Dink once wrote, may the death of war be due to my signature and mine due to peace. When we think of Dink as Armenians or foreigners, we usually think about the assassination, but not about his difficult childhood, why the Argos newspaper was a trailblazer at the time, or the campaign, the state campaign, to silence his voice. The exhibition covers all of this and more and really allows you to get to know who Dink was.